So my inspiration for this clock came from Wayfair. I don't even know why I'm making a clock, because to be honest, with COVID-19, I don't have anywhere to be. <laughs> but anyways, no, seriously, I didn't have a living room clock. Um, I did buy that one at Menards, and I told you what happened with it. But my inspiration came from Wayfair. Um, this is a oversized abstract broken wall clock. It retailed normally for $210.00. It's on sale for $149.99. It's out of stock. Obviously, it's a hot little item. So, hey, why not? So for this project, I'm going to be using a clock that I purchased from Menards. It was $15. And what ended up happening was the glass got broken. So I kept it for some type of project. And in the back, you'll notice... Some of the numbers, you can just like screw them right up. The bigger ones. So for the hands, we can we can salvage the hands, we can take the hands out. And then for the smaller numbers, we're just gonna fake those. So what we did so far was take two black pieces of poster board. You can use any color if you'd prefer white. Um, but because I'm trying to duplicate this Wayfair project, I, I went ahead and did the black so I didn't have to paint the white. And then you're going to need a mirror. You can either use a mirror that you have that's messed up or like a $6 Walmart mirror. I have one that has clearly some issues, so I'm just going to go ahead and break that one up. Okay, so these I bought at Walmart, Velcro sticky back. So I'm going to put a piece of Velcro in the middle for the hands. And then that's this long part. And then this, this part here, I'm going to stick on the back. like so of the hands. Can I stick it up? Yeah. And the reason why we use Velcro is when the battery goes bad and it needs to be changed, all you have to do is take it off, switch the battery, put it back on there. And then for the numbers, I'm going to glue those on. And what we're going to use for that is hot glue as well as E6000. So we'll do that and we'll come back.
okay so I glued the numbers on yesterday and left them on all night so they're nice and secure and remember this clock just has the 12 the 3 the 6 and the 9 that's how Wayfarer's clock appears so that's what I decided to do for this portion you're gonna need a big mirror I have my big mirror I already started breaking it I recommend that you stick the large mirror into like a garbage yard size bag for like raking leaves and things you're gonna need your hammer as well as your glue sticks and your glue gun and then pretty much what you're gonna do is and be very very careful because this is something that you could definitely get hurt on um, we're gonna take the larger pieces and start you just pick a spot take your mirror stick it on there and then glue the back Continue on, and that's where we're at. So once we get a couple of these on, I'll show you some more. Okay, so, so far what I've done is put some of the pieces on. Um, they haven't been glued down yet, but just trying to find, like, how do I want to do it? How do you want to place it? Do you like the way that it looks? And then if you notice, like, up in here, there are spaces to fill um, what I'm finding though is I kind of like the bigger sections mixed with the smaller sections and I know the Wayfair clock has more of like the smaller mosaic mirror stuff but I don't know I kind of like the bigger so anyways what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start to glue on what I have and then break up some smaller pieces you know and then just fill in like up in here there's some gaps things like that so if I were you I would just find the pieces place them on your board play around with them see what you come up with what you like before you start glowing Um, a wire cutter and these are shower curtain hooks and then you see the part that hooks what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this wire cutter and we're just gonna get in here and we're gonna cut the part that hooks and this can be kind of depending on the shower curtain this one's kind of bendy these can be kind of difficult to cut so you might have to use two hands so we take that side off, we go to the next part, remember the part that hooks, and get in there and get that off. Okay, so now we have our C. And I have, I cut this diamond wrap, it, it comes in three rows. I cut mine, um, I cut one off, so I had two, so I just have a row of two and a row of one, and you're going to need, per, per shower curtain, you're going to need 
two rows of two, a row of one, and then for the outside corners, I used two. So I just cut the two and that fits very nicely. I dropped it. That fits very nicely in the corner part. So I like to start with the inside of mine. So I take a bead of glue. Now remember you're doing small sections at a time because the glue dries really fast and the diamond wrap tends to move. So you want to stick some glue in there and then just kind of force where you want your diamond wrap to be inside of the circle. So we've got one down and then just kind of another bead. And just continue to do this until you have the entire C covered. And I can see I'm going to have some extra, but that's fine. I can use that for the ends. Okay, so that's all glued in the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim what I don't need, the excess. Trim that off. And then I'm just going to push that aside because I can use it. So now I'm going to take another of these two rows and I'm going to work on the outside of my C. So just like you did with the inside, we're just going to take a bead, stick it across the middle, take my bling wrap, place it accordingly, and then just force it where I want it to go. I wouldn't worry too much about the strings while you're in this process. You can just pick those off when you're done. Otherwise, you take the risk of it coming off. Just give it a few minutes to dry. So I just push mine down. And then move on to the next section. very nicely that may have been too much glue be careful because it does tend to get pretty warm Okay, so it appears as though I have my outside covered as well as my inside. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my outer edge. Now remember, you don't have to do both because this part you're going to glue. So you just want to do one outer edge. And that will consist of the one row that you did. So again, same thing. We're just going to take and put in some glue. Line up the diamond wrap. This part gets a little tricky because you're not obviously in a straight line. This is a C, so it has some uh, formations of moving here. Okay, keep that going. Keep moving it to si the size here. <clears throat> To the next one. I apologize for using no music, but I figured if I did that, I couldn't show you in depth, so I apologize for being boring. Okay, so follow the C and just put a bead of glue in here. it accordingly keep following the outer edge all right we're almost done And we have our C covered on the outside. However, I see we do have a little excess again. So therefore, just clip it off. And then, okay. All right, now we're gonna work on the outer edge. I need to clip this one off. There we go. Okay. Now remember. Okay, so the trick with the two C's, we're going to take and we're going to look for four different points. Glue here. Glue here. Glue here. As well as here. 